Were you offered an endometrial ablation but then not warned about the sexual impact? Endometrial ablations can actually have great results for women, controlling their bleeding, reducing the frequency, the intensity, the volume of blood. It's a simple procedure done either with a device or hysteresis where we enter into the uterine cavity and essentially burn the endometrial lining away. It helps reduce bleeding for patients with fibroids sometimes, patients with adenomyosis occasionally, and patients who have just generally heavy bleeds. It's a great, safe procedure in most people's hands, has very few side effects and can be really instrumental in improving your life. However, it doesn't necessarily always go well and there are people that have some discomfort or problems from it. So number one, your cervix is often dilated in order to put in the device that allows us to do the ablation, which means it's gonna stay open for a little while. And what do you not want inside the uterus? Sperm with ejaculate accompanying it. You cannot get ejaculate inside the uterus because you can have actually a very significant anaphylactic reaction to that. So it's important to wait at least a month to allow the cervix to close up before you try having sexual intercourse after you've had an ablation. The other part of this is because it fuses the uterine walls together, sometimes little bits of endometrium that are not appropriately treated can start to regrow and it can cause a lot of pain because that blood can no longer get out. When that happens, it can be excruciatingly painful, making intercourse absolutely unbearable. This also applies to women who have endometriosis or adenomyosis, more so the adeno, because it can trap the blood in the walls and make it exquisitely tender and much more painful than it was even before the ablation. So it's not always the appropriate treatment for every patient. So make sure you talk to your physician and get appropriately advised before you go off and have your endometrial ablation.